Gabriel and Houston, born about 1690. Aha, aha. There's a record of he fostered a Lawrence Anderson in 1743. Fostered him? Fostered him. I see. Uh, well, adopted him or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, married Agnes John's daughter, born about 1692. A record of son Marmaduke. Marmaduke. Now that's a name to conjure with. Where did he come from, that name? I don't know that. Sometimes maybe a minister. Yeah. But yeah. there's no mention of a minister ever. And I'm fine. With that man? We only name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The first minister was Humber Buchans or something. I see. But Marmaduke paid 12 shillings for the Mars cloth for his minister's day. I see. You can't go the Mars cloth, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, window uh, sheet. Well, yes, they just covered the coffee mate. Uh -huh. The coffee was just bare boards. Yeah, ah, I see, yes, yes. And, and they just leave that all the coming. And they charged for using it. Uh huh. And then. Twelve shillings, that was a bit of money then, you would have thought. That was Scots. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, Scots money. And then, Gabriel died in 1757 at Southwood. Mm -hmm. And the spouse, Relic, in 1758. And there's a knot, and she, she, it says, give half a crown to the poor, Kirk Session record. And then, the family, the first was James Gabrielson, you see, she took, he took Gabrielson for a surname. That was the old patronymic system. The patronymic system. system. Yeah, yeah. He took James Gabrielson, and he was born in 1716, and he married Barbara Lawrence's daughter. Recorded in Rurater with a son in 1773. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And died in 1790 at Rurater. Rurater is just kind of between Tarryfield and the Hall somewhere. It's it has east over. Uh -huh. There would be better to between Tarryfield and Windy Hill. And Windy Hill, I see. Kind of in our, in our, in our, in our, but, in our the But there's a girl up just below Tarryfield and looks across. You can see the what's left of the house. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what year were they recorded there, did you say? No, no. <laughs> 28 years, in 1764. 1764. No, no, I'm trying to catch up there. Not James. They tried in Rurater. Now, in 1764, his daughter aged... aged 26. Years of James Gabriel, sometimes tenants of Rurater, also noted in 1760, Kirk Session, Barbara Lawrenson as her mother. That was the wife that the man was married to. I see. And I then Gabriel Jimison, you see, that was the son of. James Gabrielson. Yes, yes, uh huh. He uh -huh. swapped the name rooms. Yeah. And J uh, James Gabriel, no, Gabriel Jimison. Born in 1749 in Rurater. And uh, married about 1781. Helen Fraser. Born 1761 in Bursa. Uh -huh. A daughter of George Fraser. But the name, wife's name. Gabriel died. Not recorded with mother in Rurater in 1773. Must be a son. Uh, in 1785, a summons of removing from Rurater in 1800. Uh -huh. But Robert Johnson, he came for Yale. He wrote that guy for a bit. I can him, yeah. I read, read about uh, the merchant there in Yale. Yes, he did. He name did. escapes me for the moment. And he died, that man. Not very nice. Ah, I see. Yeah. Wasn't an old man, he died. Uh-huh. But he was fairly full of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his eyes would go up to the archives and look. Uh-huh. And then he would, if he found anything about Stanis, he would send it down. Uh-huh. So it was him actually telling me about this, uh, this removal from Rurita. But he said, it really wasn't as drastic as it sounded because the removal was written out in any case. 
Well, but he was laying a craft you've got to remove them now. I see. Uh, Even if they were just, just laying Just official yeah. peppers and that, yeah. And then James Gabrielson was Gabriel Jimison's son. Again. And that was another James Gabrielson, another generation. Uh huh, uh huh. He was born in, 18, in 1782 in Röhrater. Uh -huh. But he was in Booster in 41. And he married Janet Johnson, born in 1775. And, and I think that's most likely uh, when it says Booster in the. In the. In the, in the, the 41 census. When it says Booster. I think it means the back of the hole. Ah, I see, I can. Boost yeah, the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wondered it that way one day. That was right, the widow. Yeah. yeah. And then James Gerberson. And then Anthony Jimison. Nobody's coming into names to do it here, this is, even uh -huh. today. <laughs> so that was about the time then that the, the patronymics changed and they just stuck with uh, Jimison, was it? I think that he almost when they changed. Uh -huh. That's kind of late on then. I think it was no, about 1750 generally that that, that, that way. I find, but again, my grandfather telling me, he says, did I know that the last man in Sanders to have his name changed was when he left. I see, I see, yeah. And what a pity that he changed change the job and never did it. <laughs> well, Cap Gabrielson. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard that. I mean, is there a fuck with that surname or not, Gabrielson? I never had one. No. You get a, 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 a range of them, isn't it? Kind of Herkelson and... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I can't remember. There's a, but there's an awful lot of kind of mm -hmm. odd surnames. Yeah. So they yeah. were in the back of the hill at that stage. Then. Yep. Well, that's what I think. Uh-huh. And then Anthony, Anthony was born at the Nip in 18-2, he married Agnes Elbister, born in 183, during the next census. And they were in Norway in, in the 1841 census. Ah, I see, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Because just the end of the chapel, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, on, on the uh, kind of opposite gardens there, or? No, 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 no. Dunfit. That was Bunnich. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. And the red gang down to Burns. I mean, there's a hoose. There's a hoose out there. There's a hoose there, yeah. Well, that's still the road fund. Yeah. So that was where they were at that. That was the Jimson Trail Farm. I, I don't mind an old uncle living in it. I see, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, Jan, Jan, uh, what's the word life selling you fool? I think that's a dog you're speaking to. <laughs> I'll not be able to see. There's no dog at your feet. That's <laughs> okay. Now, what's John Cullen? Oh, I've got him. He ordered. Five to eight. Five to eight. Uh, Anthony Jimison. He married Agnes, as we said, and they lived. He was, well, he, well, no, he did say quite a bit, you know. They were, but he was born in the Nip. Uh -huh. And that was then that lived in Norway. In 1841 census, they were in Norway. They moved in fairly Nip. They must have done. Norway now, yeah. The daughter of James, as we said, and Margaret Henderson. And he died on the 19th of April. 1885 at the Dick's Sanders. Uh -huh. No. <coughs> Apparently, her mother was surely left Norby. Uh -huh. And the good and they lived up at, up at the Dick's. Was to the grid the I see. Uh, can they, in fact, I think that was maybe outside the Dick's in the hall. Uh -huh. And this is, you can change what that was for. What was that? Bits. 
Oh, I see, I see. Better pitch. Better. No. How did you get pitch? Uh -huh. How did you get pitch? Good to know. And how did you get them home? <laughs> well, you would have carried them and they were fishing. You carried them on their back. Yeah. Because you can imagine me heading for the home of your kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that they were allowed that old fuck that lived over the dicks there. Uh -huh. But he lived there because it was handy with the hole. I understand, yeah. He did for the fuck and carried pits to the morrow they were able to win up there themselves. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. no, no, I'm, I'm quite sure that, that was the that was the Shantle Hurry that was up there. Yes, yes, uh -huh. uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. Anthony died in 1872 at the Dex in Sanders. Uh -huh. And then his family, they were the James, born in 1828 in Norway. And he grew to Greenland, where he stayed at when he left school. I see. Uh -huh. And he was lost to the end of the queer boats. I see. Uh -huh. They used to throw off at him and chase him. Yes, yes. So that was some guy. Just as a boy, like. Yeah. Just as a boy. Yeah. And then Anthony, born in 1830, he was a seaman. And he married Lonnie Thompson, born in 1837, for longer to Mandela. Uh -huh. The daughter of Sinclair Thompson and Sinclair Johnson. They, they used to have women Sinclair. I see. The lots of Sinclair women. Because that was the big uh, kind of Lords of Islands in my stage, wasn't it? Yeah. The Sinclair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sinclair Josh. And they were in Norway. They were in Norway in the 51 and 61 census. Anthony died before 1881. See notes. After son Gabriel's birth, the family moved to Liverpool, where Anthony is reputed to have sat with Peter Dole on an illegal Slave ship. Now that was the, the grip of the blacks. The grip of the blacks. Yeah. Well, well, tell, tell that story. I would yeah. like to tell us that story. <laughs> well, didn't know much to tell. Uh, Tom and Peter Dool, he was a home man. Uh -huh. They were on their ship. Yeah. And they were taken for, I think, the. I was going to say Borneo, or the north, in the north of Australia. Uh -huh. Don't uh -huh. Australia for slaves. That would have been the sugar plantation Something like that, in yeah. Queensland and that. Something like that, yes. And, uh, and they disappeared, they never saw them again. Oh, I see. But Gordon, you see, he seemed to be a grand uncle to Gordon, that's Peter Dole. Uh -huh. But Gordon maintains that he did appear again, turn up again. He didn't say much about it, but, but Anthony Dole never knew that either. Oh, I see. But this is to add Abby, Peter Dole's sister. In a hundred dumb stories, say, anyone who got a tea of old Peggy would have had a chalk muscle. <laughs> and this was then maintained by the cannibals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I see. No letter records of either men. And, and Lonnie and Sun returned to Shetland and lived in the Dale, in Dale Wise. Uh -huh. See the follow up under their own entries. And Gabriel was his son, and he was born in 1865 at the Dicks in Sanus. They must have had a maternity unit up there. And, uh, and he fell over the cliff and up the hostel away. Now, was that the. the, the but there were some suspicious circumstances about that. that. The boy's body, they were a half-bought fighting with the snarlers. Uh 
Uh, I uh, packed up the bodies from my mother papa's room. I see. We're supposed to land them at Snyder's. But I've never been able to, to find out that that was true or not. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, in, in part, in, in Snyder's. Oh yeah, this is here, this is here. The headless body picked up my hackboard at Muth of Patterson and many of the snares. And it says, that, that's what I'm writing on along the top here, but it also says here, also suspicion of foul play. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They, they thought that he was, he was being doing a wrong. Oh, I see. But not, nobody was ever charged, there was never any case. There were a, a policeman attempted to interview with the, the man in there. Oh, I see. Because there was a strong suspicion that this dead man was killed him. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They were both in Sanders the same day. It was a day of fog. Uh -huh. And I moved you up the Huckster. And I was a boy. And asked some of the other folk there. They would have made it quite clear what they thought. Come to the boy. I see. They were supposed to hear this road now. I see. But they maybe weren't able, maybe able to gather the evidence or... No, they could not. Yeah. Nothing to show. That was the hideous body at the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would suggest something. What? Foul play like thing. Not on hand of her. Bodies and lost their heads. Ah, uh, kind of what you mean, so they're in the sea or...? Yeah. Uh, Bully tonic. Oh, he, would, he, he didn't have a hate. Oh, I see, I see. He nearly said he didn't. Okay, we're done again. So what did we get to? We were speaking about the boy. Yes. He was lost or killed. Yeah, or well, what did come on? He was good anyway. Uh-huh. And then it was on to speak about... Uh, Gabriel and Jimison. Born in 1839 and married in 1867 in Rarwick. Susan Robertson claimed morals but not found, but not found. But she married for Sanders, the daughter of John Robertson and Marilyn Jimison. Gabriel died after 1868. Claimed, oh yes. Claimed died resisting arrest on a ship, not, no issue, having killed the mate of the vessel. Killed the mate? Yeah. So it says, there is a handy down story that Gabriel died while resisting arrest on a board, on board ship, having killed the mate. Not seen a record of this. He married in 1867, Susan Robertson. That's just, this uh, it is very often he repeats it and the one piece. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. But there's no record uh, what boat he was on no, or no, what yeah, people this might have happened. Uh, no, I have no idea. And you're the only person ever had it. I see. It was a pretty tough life aboard ship though, and some oh, of the mates were maybe, of yeah. course, <laughs> first characters. So, that was likely, likely cars enough, eh? For a fake. Oh, maybe it wasn't, uh, maybe it wasn't be at wind in that. No, no. Uh, Yon is better. And then Hugh Jimison, which a brother did that gave him. Uh -huh. A huge emission was born in 1842 in Norway. He married in 1862, hmm, 20 years old when he married. Uh -huh. Margaret Wellington, born on the 18th of August 1838 in Tilford, uh -huh. daughter of Thomas Wellington and Anne Johnson, or Johnson. And she died in August 1929 in Norway. She was 90. Uh -huh. and, uh, Hugh died in 1912. He died outside the, the decks 
Oh, I see. You look blue chip. This one. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. And then you were an Anthony Jimison. But there no says of what he did or didn't do. And then you were James. This is Al Robbie's brother and sister. This is his family before he did Ah, I see. That's his generation that we're in. And James was a, 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 a sea captain. And he emigrated to New Zealand. And he died in New Zealand unmarried. Oh, I see. And he was reputed to have helped Robert start the business here. Ah, I see. How much mm -hmm. money in that? Well, I would imagine he maybe could give a little. Yes, yes. And then there were Jesse. Well, in 1871, and she died in 1920, 48 years, blind from birth. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And and then there was Annie, Anne Jimison, 1873, no, she married her. Uh, Thomas Peterson for all of them down him. And, uh, and he died, I don't know what happened to him. Uh -huh. And then she married to Jimmy Johnson, and he came to North Maven for her life. Uh -huh. And uh, then they, 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 they lived here in Sanders. And he bringed up the burns. Uh -huh. Because it used to be, you okay, know, when the John and the Yes, yes. I and they lived there, and then they moved, for some reason they moved to Lerwick, I don't know why. Uh -huh. In fact, I think they moved soon. So there was a lot of them then, that generation, that yes. uh, Al Bradley was yeah. well now, yeah? yeah? Big family. I think it's why well, it's something different. Uh -huh. But uh, but that's kind of coming into we're minded now, you're minded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And te tell me again, but but. To him and uh, going to Vaux and Aries that we were speaking about the other night. Uh. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it's ah, you see. And my father never spoke much about him, Gan, in the air. I'm kind of trying to circle the corner of my own. But uh, he got to Vaux, I'm an old Robbie Cole, that's in Melville, Puns. I see. Uh -huh. He got there as boys. Just come out of the school. Oh, I'd imagine. Yeah. And they rocked at Eddie's. And uh, he was there and told there was some kind of a wood fire. Uh -huh. But he left and came home. And the story was that there was a funeral and he wanted to go home to him and they wouldn't let him. Oh, I see. But I don't know who it was, I know. And uh, But what he did in the years between. He called me for and sat in the shop here. I, I don't know about that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Couldn't say. Was there a, a gap then, kind of, between him finishing and Bo and... and I don't know that. Shop? Is the shop here began in 1893, is that right? 1893, she signed a check. Uh -huh. He was only 18. They, they couldn't he was be much 18 of a, then? They couldn't be much of a gap. If he was, what, 14 if, when he finished the school? Well, he might have been 15 or something. That uh -huh. Pretty good of all, so. Yeah. Would have been nailed at the time. And he would have been a school here in the, the days of the other. Oh, yes, Robert yes. Robert Jimison, yes, the, the scholar yes, in Jerusalem, yes, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because Arthur Robbie, the school died, then Arthur Robbie, in the shop here, adopted his signature. Ah, I see. Adopted it? Adopted it. Well, he decided. Yes. Ah, I see. Started in Europe. He had been an influence on him. R O B E R T. J A M I S O N, like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Random off. I see. Yeah. Could have seen other of it, Jim was singing to. Beth Bennett, uh -huh. and uh, 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 my grandfather singing to Christopher Samus. That's how the the school was. I see. Yeah. But, Jans. Jan just about brings them up to the, to the present day. Yeah. He brings them up to Robert Jimison, like my grandfather. Yeah, yeah. 
He was the founder of the shop. I had that written here about the sign. Uh -huh. uh, he was born in 1875. So he was a, he must have been an enterprising young lad to start a, a shop at 18. And well, he, circumstances mixed with the fan tunnel or something. Because uh, that was about the end of the Scots and Melbourne. That it was the end of the Scots and Melbourne, yeah. yeah. And up until then, the shop and everything had belonged to them. Yeah. Well, as far as I, I assume that. Yeah, yeah. There were factors here about that time, weren't they? Yes, yes. Garrick's. Garrick's was Dravick. Uh-huh, uh -huh. And then there were also, that Jimmy, a, a Jimmy Jimson. Now, is he one of the Cruzdale ones? No. Or, no. He was for Kraken. Oh, I see, uh -huh. They were Jimmy Jimson and Kraken, but they were related to the Cruzdale ones. Who's the ones? What if after Delman? Was that right originally? Did he come for Del or Fader? Did I read that somewhere? Yaki was his grandfather. Yaki. Yaki. Yaki Nicholson. Uh huh. Why was he then? He was out of the room. It's good to his grandfather. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I could get the tent, but I think it's lined up yonder. Uh -huh. It's a sad day. Uh, pretty bad, pretty good, uh, uh, on Yogi. Uh huh. Yogi's burn. Well, that's him, the burn. Uh -huh. How did that get his name then? What? The burn, what was the story? Well, it's just the youngest of burn, I don't know what he can do. Uh huh. But he can do the other, and then he ran away to this thing. Uh huh. And wouldn't sell the dicks. Uh huh. And then he turned and he came to the washer. Uh huh. They were going to bite the burn, I see. I see, yeah. And the old Yogi. When he came to bite up in the room, he straightened the burn, but I don't know the way he is, he knew. Ah, I see, yeah. Uh -huh. So he got the name Yaki's burn, if there is. Uh huh, uh huh. That must have been a fair bit of whack then, yeah, involved maybe. in it, yeah. And this is where we were in at the history group, and that come up, so I mentioned Yaki's burn. And I said, Yeah, I said, You're kidding with Yaki. And all those black faces were going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, I'll tell you what it was. I said, they used to slip the kai up at the green moor and maybe over the front of the hull uh -huh. at the hair stand, you see. Uh -huh. And they did slip the kai up there. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then it's just ah, there's kind of old young women or spinsters, I see. <laughs> they were going up to fetch the kai down at night just to the darkening, you see. Uh -huh. And it's just couldn't take it up there, I said. Yucky was waiting for them. <laughs> and he would yuck them when they got. <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> there was some David Summers, I think David Summers was back down to the day, tell me a great story. <laughs> but no, no, he was Jacob. 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 Uh, Jacob. Jacob, I Jacob. suppose it would have been. That, I mean, it still is to this day and fairer than that, isn't yeah. it? Jacob, Jacob. So. So he did after Edis of old then as a, as, a, as a youngster, and Edis was a great enterprise. Oh my gracious, time. huge at that time. Uh -huh. They were still in the, in the, in the fishing trade. Uh -huh. That was the, the Faroe banks and that? that one yeah, well they had the smacks and they had that. So. Uh -huh. I have a book about Edis. Yeah, yeah. Well, in journal's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was Edis. Daisy is in them, isn't she? Yeah, they had a father of her. Do it down with so So he, he would have kind of learned the, the, the shop trade maybe. Well, I would have nicely probably that, did. That was what he brought back with him, I suppose. Yeah. Eh? But he, he brought a, a wife back with him as well, didn't he? No, no. No? Is she not at that, that, that bow somewhere? No, I think so. Alright. No, he picked her up in Melby, was he? Oh, she was working hard in Melby, had so much Melby. So she had been there what, in, in, in the days of the Scots, and then uh, was it working maybe? Her? Yeah. Well, I should imagine that, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, you can only just sort of say, well, she had to be if she was there uh -huh. for such and such a time. So why come in the Melby who's after them then? Why took it over? Well, Anderson. That was Anderson when he came. Anderson uh -huh. But he used Vela, didn't he? He used Vela, never came to Sanders. Well, he never come to Sanders. I see. So did it stand uh, vacant? Well, they, they used to make it a fair amount of money. Ah, I see. And I do, there were lots of, lots of visitors and stuff coming back up on the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, that was good. But, but Melby, who's 
dus is wat hij dit was, dat is eindigd, die hele relation, of some description, dat wordt een alcoholic. Uh-huh. En die pakt hem te melden voor te manage de firm. I see. Because they had lots of crafts, of they were a craft that came back in the book that time, they had kept it. Look, that's what I mean. Uh-huh. If the craft was at back, they didn't really learn it. Yeah, yeah. So it just kind of became so they, they had half a dozen crafts uh-huh. in the place. And uh, so this man, Bankert, Bankert. was his name, he came to Sanders to look after the the firm. Uh-huh. And they were far off there and there. And I, and you and my own granddaughter, you were there. I see. There were lots and lots of fucking crafts there. But it hadn't been the last night time you see. That's usually right out of the back door. Uh-huh. And so, and then she passion, didn't you? And she didn't let the shop go. Uh-huh. But uh, you didn't, the other thing is lost, you'll never know anything. Well, you maybe never get the full story no. on it all. But you never can. But, uh, but maybe you'll have come somewhere in a case there, right? right? Documentation. But, uh, So he came in and he started the shop here, but that was it was done at the heart to begin with. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. But that would have been maybe the old premises that the, the lairds, so to speak, had had you know, where he started. Uh, well, as far as I, as far as ever I can, he, the shop was at the south end of the north half. Ah, I see. The yeah. downstairs room. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Which is for the shop. Yeah, yeah. But, but whether that was true or not, I don't know how to tell you. Uh-huh. And what was he biding at that moment? Right. Alder Abbey? Biding in the morning, no. Still in there? At the home. Yeah. Uh-huh. Next to the church. Because there were about three or four of the bairns born in that. Yeah. Ah, I see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And he had a lot of bairns. Him and Kitty. He did so. Kitty Christie, wasn't it? And he kind of had the unanimous of marriage too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Robert Jimmison, 1876, Norby, Sanders. Mel, well, Melby had managed, you know, Melby had managed. I don't know what that. Man, on the 1st of January, 1895, in Larry, uh-huh. Catherine Jane Christie. Uh-huh. Well, on the 18th of May, 1872, she was about Anderson. Uh-huh. Crooked thing was. She was wise. Well, she was fuller. Fuller? I yeah, yeah, they were, they were fuller. They, they were come up to fuller and brown and wise. Uh huh. Daughter of Lawrence Christie and Agnes Johnson. Daughter of Lawrence Christie and Agnes Johnson. No, Smithfield Sanders at the marriage. Ah, I see, yeah. So they were fooled by the. Smithfield seemed to be a strange horse to those. Because, as it stands today, it was just a half a horse, look at it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And yet, before that, there were maybe two or three families living in it. Ah, I see. Uh-huh. So it must have been like, a, when it was an half straight horse. I don't know what. Maybe a few different biggins. I don't know what. I don't know what it was. Yeah. But, you see, he married in, he married in the 1st of January, 1895. And, Maggie was born the 19th of June, 1895. I see. <laughs> yeah. And then Jimmy was born in September 96. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They weren't a Western time. And, uh, and what, or Robert, what, what is wrong? Oh, no, no, you're just getting into Jimmy Jimson's family now. That's confusing, this, though. Yeah, yeah, why well, it's led you from that, yeah. Lawrence Christie Jimmy. Well, I suppose to show you that big thing about this day. That was the one you were speaking about, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell that story again. Well, wait till we get to then. All right, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Lawrence Christie Jimmy, born in 1897. They were living in Norby then. Uh-huh. They were still living in Norby. 
En nu ben ik dus uh, massakaas en koets. En dan... En dan John Wissert, Jimmy. Uh -huh. 1899. Hij died in 1920. Ik zie. Moeder zijn 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 We did, maybe still have a father with it. Ah, I see. But uh, that's all we knew. Nothing ever come back, we never, no, never no. had anything. We never had anything with it. Uh -huh. And then Frankie, yeah, that was Frankie. And then Pat Spader, Huey. And he was born in Norway as well. So they were still in Norway in 1905. Well, that was, they lived at the North Nest yeah. there in Hildarby, the Hoos there. That's right. Back in London, three, three boys. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah, here it is. Got the games out of here. But... So yeah. how many have we got so far? Is that five so far? Must be. And then Peter. Peter. The good bow. That was the, the bow yeah. branch. Yeah. Uh, but he was born in October 1905 and he was born here in Melbourne. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, what I tell you about that is, uh, he married, so he took her into Norway to that uh, old home. And then this croft up here became vacant. That's the, the Garrick's yes, that the I would count. Yeah, yeah. That became vacant. Well, then the, what was it, Fleur de Lys or something? That's what they had the yes. And, uh, and he, he surely got the graph, got it, got it, you see. And he built it beyond as she is. Ah, I see. Yeah. Fashioned it and renovated it. Okay, so it was just, well, I can mind Mum saying that the, he said he it for a head young graph. Ah, just for, for actually space. During the, the years you were speaking about. He, yeah. he, he was trying to make a film with me. Yeah, yeah. And she read he was keep quiet on her. In the house itself. Yeah. <laughs> It was quite possible. You yeah, had a bit of a clear nut to so, do that. Anyway, he, he bought John Houston and they arrested her. Uh -huh. And then they... She was just in this... We had a saloon. Just the roof, nothing, nothing sideways or nothing upstairs. Uh -huh. And then he started the bond again. Just sometime before the first war. He, he hashed it up for quite a year, you know. Ah, I see. Uh -huh. Because from the bears up here. Yeah, the screen, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> so we must be working slowly towards uh, my grandfather, your father, mm -hmm. and the list of we. Well, this is young, 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 young was Peter, we were talking about. Uh -huh. He married Isabella Johnson. They vote, but, but Well, he married the, into vote then. Peter? Yeah. Yeah. He was there, was he kind of a, a, a four? Yes, yes, he was involved. Ah, I see. I mind him, I can mind him many. Uh-huh. I did him many. 17th book. It doesn't say when he was, when he was, when he married. Barbara, that's a better chance. But they were bad for The Johnson said, was that he married. Ah, I see. Pure or something, the fair middle, and some of the, All the family was born in Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. And then they made their way to Vaux. And then they got to Vaux. Because they were great trainers when Vaux and Barrett and Eddie had their young stuff going. Yes, yes. You were saying they began to appear there in Papa during the, the days of the, I suppose, when the fashion, the feral west fashion was, was booming around. And then, there's a 
the only place to drink from here. Uh -huh. And then this is all his family coming down this way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and not only his family, but his family's family. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's not the easiest lay layout to find. Mm, not, not, not very. Mm -hmm. And then uh, come down here to. That's my father now. Uh -huh. And the one in Jimmy. Stop it, you fool. So he wasn't the, the, the oldest by any means in the, the family there. Your father, my grandfather. No, 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 he was no. There was a lot of older than him in the yeah. family, yes. And Alan Jimmy is here. <laughs> Born in 1956. Mel Sanders. 58. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Better fix that one. I can guarantee that. I can <laughs> January 28th. Gilbert Bain laughing. 5 15 pm. I just not see. I was looking at my birth certificate not so long ago. I was clearing it and sorting it and hand and fan it. I just not see. What the lit? No, 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 detail. Yeah. So what, 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 what was his story then? He, he was born when, what year? Oh, yeah. Your father, what, when was he, he born? He was born here in Melbourne. Uh-huh. Up by the, the floor of the lease, as we would call it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But he would have been, he would have been too young to, to serve in the war, is that right? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, Mom. He was born in 1907. I see, so he would just have been a pretty boy really. So the one for Easter, she said, don't even take. Yeah, yeah. No, seven to seventeen years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did he do when he finished here at the school? Well, he was good to see. He good to see? Yeah, he was good to see. Uh -huh. I went and seen that back and forth. Uh -huh. For land? I had no idea. Uh -huh. And then Jimmy Jimson, his, his brother, uh, got into partnership in the shop in Wise. Ah, I see, yeah. Look at this. There's fuck in Wise. Quite a bit in Wise, is that? We could pack the Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, were, they were in Jordan family. I said, apparently, I don't think been in the main shop in Wise. Uh -huh. And, uh, and they, they were immigrant, you were the immigrant, that's what. Uh -huh. It was in Wise the case. And uh, the whole family was gone. I see. And uh, actually it was up for sale, but he, he actually got into it. I mean, uh, uh, John Jordan was the man's name. Uh -huh. uh, so it had, the man had traded under the name of Jordan and Jimison. I see. But the the Jordan man, he was actually a, a East Gaidens. He can't be nice to the East. He was born in the East Gaidens. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So he really was a Sanders man. In this, but, but he was been good to Sanders for years, as far as I can. Uh -huh. And Rocht, he was on the Marsh Bank with Paul Hodges in the shop up there. And that. I see, yeah. But anyway, but quite as much as good there at the beginning, I am talking about our Rocht. Well, but I didn't care about that. Uh -huh. And we bathed in Wise for a pretty while. Uh huh, uh huh. Mr. C. Yeah. While well, he was kind of working in the shop. When he was working in the shop. Uh huh. But. What about St. Wise, were you? Rock Lee. Rock Lee, what's that now? It's the mall who's done below the doctors. Oh, right, uh huh. Uh -huh. The shop was on the lower side, right? Uh huh, uh huh. Rock Lee's just kind of up and diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can, yeah. How yeah. long were you there for? Well, that I can't tell you. Uh -huh. It couldn't, it couldn't have been that long. Uh -huh. No, it couldn't, it couldn't have been that long. A couple of years, maybe, or something. Uh -huh. I, I can just do have vague memories of Biden and Wise. Uh -huh. Very vague. That would have been about the early 30s, so just about 19. Oh, yeah, it would have been maybe 32. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I must have been three. Uh -huh. And then I don't know what happened as he left, Wes. I 
Ez a kis kérdés, hát most nem vagyok, hogy rakni és kocsám, no, ez ilyen. Az így, így lesz, ez igaz, hogy jobb, mint egy sűrűn. Ez volt egy sűrűn, 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 Maar je moet er maar een beetje in. 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 Maar je moet er That was quite the office was yeah. as full as here. And, and he would, so he bid in digs and rhetoric, you see. I see, you heard. And, and when you think into rhetoric and bid our week, and then come back again. Was this while you were in, no, and you'd left wise with? Left wise, and you come back and you'd bid in the plank. I see, you heard. Yeah, you had your whole room in the closet, the gates were good for part one to bid. Why was in the plank at that time, then? Oh, what, what was this? When you were doing my grandfather's and grandmother and Bobby and Maggie. I see, yeah. And then it was three. I see. Put them in there. And it went wrong with the closet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 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 Because I didn't think it would be a problem. No. Well, fuck, maybe talk differently. Because everybody was in the school. Yeah, that's what you did it in terms of space and that. So you were there for what kind of the mid years of the thirties? Oh, or? again, we weren't there very long. Uh -huh. This is what happened was, I think it was arranged. Uh, Jimmy Jimson, my uncle, was here in the shop, uh -huh. and he was already amassed quite a lot of bears. I see. So he would get young horse, and he got this one fixed up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He would go this crop. Uh-huh. And he rebuilt the house like this, what it is now. I see, yeah, yeah. And, and I can just mind, one time, coming here, which we, me and Mammy used to meet the shop or something, and we come down here to the, to the, to the house, and I can mind standing at the middle door and looking in the nose, and they would see right to the roof. I see. <laughs> and, and just kind of in awe, looking up at this, and they were men working up the yeah, yeah, yeah. rafters and that kind of So this was after Al Robbie had gone to go then? He'd gone to go then. When did he go to go again? Well, he had to go about 1930. I see, uh-huh. Probably before 1930, but I'm not sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So then he, the, the son, Jimmy, would have had the Garricks there. He got the Garricks. That was, he was kind of moving. Yeah, and he lived there until this was ready then. He moved in here, and we are moved in next door. Ah, I see, I see. Because my father had the happy young cross in his name. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And my grandfather had the cross between them. I see. Uh -huh. And you were there in the Garricks, and you got you know, for what up until you got to learn? Good learning. Uh -huh. But I'm not exactly sure what year we got to learn. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and this always seemed to me to be a year missing. Uh -huh. But I can't. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> I suppose the Brack of War would have kind of changed mm -hmm. everything in a way, would it? Just the, the school from the war book. Uh huh, uh huh. But school here? No. Uh, uh. Yes, 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 I'm still trying to say it now. No, no, we could have been about 41, 42, I, I think. Uh -huh. I think. But I'm not sure. Uh, and all during this time, your father, my grandfather, had been going on the motorbike and had digs in the town and the office. And yeah. So it would have kind of made sense, I suppose, for, for you all to move there. That's right. Well, see, I was going to be in there. Uh, you were going to the school? I was going to go to the school in there. He yeah. was buying in there. Was that unusual at that time for Fuck to go on to Lerwick and, and the school there? No, well it depended on us. Uh, if the Fuck really wanted them to gain and, I see. and if they could afford to put them. Yeah. 
Mademoiselle was the one for getting on and yeah. doing your lessons. I, I mind that. <laughs> it was like in the same with you. Oh, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. So that must have been a kind of a, an upheaval then, going to the tomb after. I can't mind but I don't mind much about it at all. Yeah. What age would you have been then? Twelve, twelve or something, was it? Well, twelve or thirteen. Uh -huh. There was no there was no age limit for the young in the school in Larry. Oh, I see. Yeah. Because Peter Peterson, Peter Boone, uh -huh. he was the best person five years older than me. Uh -huh. And he was only the class of Boone me in Larry. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. He seemed to be lit. Lit the answer. He was like a year older. Uh huh. Uh huh. Then if I good to him, because I was twelve, and he good when he was thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. And were there a lot of bairns coming from different parts of the islands then? Yes, yes. And I suppose what bird in some way or did they did? They were hostile. Well, the hostile was in existence. Women, the last was hostile. Ah. ah, the Bruce. The Bruce, Bruce wasn't it? That was for everybody at that time. That spring. was for masses. Just for masses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the boys' hostel was up to for a. The, 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 the boys' hostel and the institute was 10 hours for a voluntary hospital. Ah, I see, I never kept that. Mm -hmm. And you kick it, kick it, there do. So that's why it was the central that you go to instead of the, the Anderson Educational Institute, as it used to be called, wasn't it? Yeah. You go to the central. Ah, I see. Yeah, I that. Uh -huh. So the whole thing decamped into the central. Yeah, yeah. That. So they divided the over rooms in the central. Uh -huh. And they just further things out to the rooms to do, and they could get a classroom. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. The bands. Uh -huh. And they took me down to the other, underneath the man's cut. And I kind of a room there. That was beautiful school. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were there, they were there, they were there. I can't even go to the rooms in the center, they were divided. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because they had to throw. Like this school would be the room. Uh -huh. They would come in, and they had to pass through young, this classroom to get to this door to the end of that. And just pat up partitions. Pat up definitely partitions. Right? I see. Uh -huh. I never came down to the, 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 the school, the hostel. Yes, yes. That was the hospital, was it? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So, what did it feel like being at the school in Lerwick? Because you should settle it. Uh huh. You see, tell you what happened with us, but it came, what happened with me. We got to the school in Lerwick, you see. And of course, uh, in comes the teacher, the math teacher, you see. And she puts up the algebra by the, by the desk, by the blackboard. Uh -huh. And I just sat there and looked at that and guess what, what's going on. You know? <laughs> and then I discovered that the class that I was in had never had algebra. Uh -huh. And we'd had about two years of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We would be sorted in algebra. You were a pretty grain ahead. I was a long piece ahead. Because uh -huh. I didn't mind algebra, it seemed to work out to me for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what was the teacher uh, here at Samus that you had? Oh, Jody Yell. That was Joe Diddy Yell. Yeah. For Samus. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. And that was the Samuel Arnstock thing. We were the head of the central. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much ahead. And you met in the, the old manse in the south end, was that where you first came to? Yes, yes, we were right in there. Uh-huh. And like you say, one time, a long time ago, you used to, to meet up with Rhoda and yeah. uh, go up to the school together. Yeah, it was, just, it was a course day for the west. Then I'd get along the street, not bankling. Uh-huh. But she was shattered. And that's why the Rhoda gave good to the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we met up, we good together. You were in the same year? The same no, she was a year ahead of me. I see. But she was some age as me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you see, there were always that bit of variation. They never really came to quite age. I mean, they came to really be within a year of me. But, uh, but, uh, but, yes, yes, I can't have it with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were sib in some way. Yeah, that. yeah. She just, she, I think it was hard to come with that. Uh huh, uh huh. She was for not this. She had, was it somewhere in the Brigham Wars or that, was it? She was for not this. Master, 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 Master,
But, but what, 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 what was there? The, 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 the thing that lies most vividly in my mind was the day they blew up the MTBs at the docks down at the, for the Broom, for the broom Trad. I see, uh -huh. And I went up to the school, you see. And there was a lot of activity and smoke and stuff coming up to there. Uh -huh. And then you'll see the treasure bullets going out. I see, yeah. Uh -huh. It followed them, it was in kind of a dark and kind of a morning. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, we had just got to school, as far as I mind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was especially the end of the end in that, you see, we were a bit of a Yeah, yeah, And we got there, you see, and then the rumours were that they were going to be uh, torpedoes or mines or something was going to explode. Uh -huh. So they would dump it into the shelter, and they in shelters to me. I see. When <laughs> you get to sit up all morning, from 9 o'clock to 1 in the area, it's had us working. Something you're looking for, okay? No, and it wouldn't have been necessarily the best circumstances no. for learning. No, that's what you're on. They were not lighting as far as they were right, right? No. And, uh, no. but see, the science room at the, at the centre was right up in the back corner, the south corner of the centre. Uh huh, uh huh. After you can imagine what I'm speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, here to his. Commercial road in Ardun here. Yeah. That's the central school. Yeah. This corner was where the central room was. Yes, yes. And our activity was done here. Uh -huh. So a lorry throw. We had a lorry throw. We heard them. We heard his name, yeah. Yeah, well, lorry throw was a science teacher. Uh -huh. He says, there's no uh, was an exam day. Uh -huh. It must have been Christmas exam. Uh -huh. And But he says, there's no, you can do your exam. There's nothing ever going to come at you back at the school. And we were all for it, we were, we were sort of, if, if we were psyched up for it, we wanted to get by anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were the only class in the school that morning. <laughs> I think the afternoon had kind of passed by. Yeah, yeah. They had gone out of control. <laughs> yeah. And there was, was, was there no kind of early on the uh, way? I mean, when the, the, the Nazis got into Norway, when there, there was kind of a sense that maybe they might try and Come in through tr Oh yeah, yeah, they did. They, they worried about them. Yeah. I'll be the Peterson. That was Teddy's father. Uh huh. He he was him. You see. And old Peterson was a, a very very officious man. Uh -huh. And if there were any thing, just yonder was quite half or three quarters or mayor and the main sons would just sort of regard and let somebody else. He would have been infested. Uh -huh. So he might have been some kind of a lance corporal or something. I see. I'm not sure exactly what, what he had, what son he had. But <laughs> they said that they were a night that they were welcome somewhere. Must have come here to the shop. He said, Jimmy Jimson, I don't know if I'm 24 hours here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But anyway, <laughs> you've forgotten the word. That they were uh, some movement taking place in Narva. I see, yeah. There's a scene. And uh, so this was, they called out the home guard. Uh -huh. And they were a big Alfred Fraser that lived in Norway. You know. <laughs> and, and old Peter could knock them up, among the rest. And uh, his brother's head out the window and said, Quite a squat son. And old Peter says, There's something afoot. <laughs> And he says, if there's something of the crook, I'm getting the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> it was not bad. But okay, now that uh, Germans had landed, and that party, oh, made me bitter out because they had to do the mask. You know what I mean? But there, there was a lot of troops kind of stationed up Shetland there. Well, they were not looking for them, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm just checking. They wouldn't have uh, been present in this. No, 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 no. And after, after 20 men, men, 15 or 20 men here, he just shined on his fight, man. Killed him, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a total massacre. Yeah. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. But uh, I don't mind much else. Half more than that, it begins. They used to come over the air raids and that. Uh-huh. I mean, the day they shot the plane down over Brescia. I see. We were by the loud mass. Yes, yes. And uh, the, the li living room was up, went flight up the street. 
So there's a lovely view of the harbour, also the Wizard Farms looked to there. And uh, I don't know, I was a Sunday afternoon. And boy, suddenly just crack, crack, crack at this gun. Ah, this right. was the Wizard Farms gun. They had a gun muzzle for the Wizard Farms. I see. Yeah. And uh, of course, it rushed to the window right away. <laughs> when they tag and cover, yeah. rushed to the window. But he got there. Uh -huh. Got this plane. Uh -huh. And uh, you saw this puff of smoke coming from him. They just smoke coming. And as soon as he got away, she sent it to the window. Uh -huh. And she could do it to back of the I see. And they were doing that. They had pretty fast and they were fast. Uh, air sea rescue adventures. Yes, yes. Yeah. Two of them we looked. And they got the main with over. I see, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They got the with over. Yeah. So the, the military hospital that was up there, that would have been what fuck coming into Shetland that had been wounded or injured? Well, no, I thought it was for fuck out of Shetland. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, just, just the uh, yeah. army. Uh, Oh, I understand. Of course, it was yeah. better than hell if they were uh, a swine fever in Camden. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. They, they would have been in the clinics and maybe half of the planes had that would have been wounded in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they wouldn't have got there at that. Uh, I see. I, and there was a lot of work over in Graven, wasn't there? Oh, my yeah. dear, yeah. That was kind of the main uh, yes, yes, base. Yes, that was quite of the Plains to Narva and Pharaoh cover like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they would that place you dig go back here at the time. I see. Uh, yeah. All the sea planes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So that would have been a, an eventful few years then at the school and uh, Oh I don't know what you mean. But when, when it was all over, you, you good to, to the garage to do an apprenticeship there. Yeah, good to do a lot of London, I did. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I was, only, I was only two years at the school, you see. I see, yeah. Uh -huh. And after I got to the school, 41, 42, and then I think maybe 43, 44. Uh-huh, uh -huh. I thought I was in the garage. And that interest in engines and cars and all, that had been, uh, the seeds had been sown a while before. Is this we lived up by. Uh -huh. My grandfather, he, he was here on the cars and stuff. That was Peter Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so you were always in, in there. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And uh, got a lot of information for him about it. Uh, I see. And, uh, and that just keep it. I don't know if I can dig with the bolts. And, and, uh, and that was all right. Uh -huh. Why was Baltz physically at that time in the tin? Why did it? On the north, left side junction. Ah, okay. Grandfield. Yeah. Yes, yes. But when the do comes to the end, turns and goes up. Uh huh. With the first 50 years, maybe less than 50 years, was it Baltz garage. Ah, I see, yeah, yeah. There was some garage, man. Concrete shack. Uh huh. We had a tin roof. And uh, the wind just curled through it. <laughs> Half the windows were boiled up in. And uh, there were six rows of rust. Uh, why was running at that? Oh, uh, Lowry Bond. Lowry Bond. Uh -huh. What was his pedigree? Why was he? Uh, oh, he was a Goldrick man. I see. Uh -huh. Or was he had been a Goldrick? So I'm not just sure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whatever was working in there at that time then? Well, there was, there was a Southern Man from Berlin. Uh huh. And Harry McCurry. Uh huh. And that was two, and Johnny Johnson, Tressa, Harry Johnson, Nestle, and me. That was five. And they were kind of older men, weren't they? Or were they well, well, as well? well, well yeah. three, this, me and Robbie Johnson and the Johnson man, Peter Hester, was just a year after the end of it. I see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
But then it was, was there a lot of cars in Shetland at that time? Or? Well, there seemed to be plenty of work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This was the most of work you do with uh -huh. You wouldn't have found a new perch, right. like what they do now. Yeah. You push the car in and you say, oh, it's this thing, it's the throttle. Mm -hmm. This one, screw this one on it, and right, up you go. Yeah, yeah. You can't have that and fix it. So you were making bits and fitting them on? Oh, yeah, 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 and you can't get what you're doing with. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I, she's, I could drive very, when I was very young. Uh -huh. I could Was drive. that Peter Garrick at uh, yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. What he, age? What age were he? About nine. About nine. <laughs> yeah, he had an old Model T phone. I see, yeah. And, and it was a shop then. Uh huh. When it had finished, it was done for the shop work. Uh huh. Then he got it. And he made it. I got him a very, very early tractor out of it. I see. <laughs> and, uh, I got spigot quills up on the thing. Uh huh. And, uh, and we used to blow it. Ah, I see. But this is, he couldn't blow himself it. He needed somebody to, ha to steer the blue and somebody to steer the car. Yes, yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So this is quite hard because I can't play the school at night, mind. I did that thing and I went good. So he was steering the blue he and he was steering the, the, the Model T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. So that's how you learn to drive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then of course, my father had a car in those days. Uh -huh. I mean, having a Ford 8 and a Mars 8. He had a Mars 8 and a pretty red young I had. Was this when you were in the tune? No, 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 when we were born here, before we got to Mary. I see. Yeah, he was getting up the mother box and got in the car. He had two or three cars before we got to Mary. Uh -huh. And then, uh, and then we, uh, I would get a bit of this car and all that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. the Rodnik. Uh -huh. yeah. So you were kind of going and coming between Sanus and the Toon? We did, sure. yeah, we did. Those years, yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. I mean, there we could never stay an hour. Okay, you go to there and you hit your chums and there and the rest of them. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, yes. The boys in your class in the school and that. Yeah, yeah. They had the but uh, that didn't have to come up to Sanders. No, 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 no. And you were still kind of coming home when you came yeah. to Sanders, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So, how long were you in Baltz for then? I'm not sure. Yeah. I've seen it two and a half or three and a half years. I see. Or, or somewhere, somewhere between the two, I, I really didn't care. And that was the kind of foul apprenticeship? None. No, no, I wasn't. I was, I, I, you were supposed to do a five years apprentice. That's five years, was it? Uh, mm -hmm. So the chance to come back to San Estan kind of came before you were finished? Yeah. I see. But uh, when I just come back and that was what I was doing. Uh, happy to come? Well, it must have been. Uh -huh. I, I didn't, it was, it was, it was, they got a chance to have met to do your cards. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. They were driving. Yes, yes. From here. Uh -huh. Because they didn't get much driving in the box, yes. except there is a lorry. Well, the youngest apprentice, apprentice. But he can drive the youngest one. <laughs> so <laughs> if there were anything we fetched in, this is it. Uh -huh. But he wasn't going to say it was costing them mail, he was saying the cheaper thing. I see. So he said, we're, we're going to Scalwa for a car, we're going to Tingle for a car, we're going to Sandwick for a car. Uh -huh. And uh, take me. <laughs> I could drive. <laughs> so some of them couldn't have, no. Yeah, some of the other instances. They couldn't have drive. But the, 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 the kind of rubbish from Nelson, he couldn't drive. But he would work on them. He was working on cars. <laughs> yeah. And that day with Johnny, it's rest, he, but I don't think it was much of a, but he wasn't let, he wasn't any experience to this. Uh -huh. But, uh, but it was, I, I would get the job to go with Johnny and fix cars. And, I see, I see. And uh, Peter Garrick, your, your grandfather, he, he was up here in, in the, the garage here up by, working away yeah, during all those years when you were kind of going he, and he, coming. He had 
ski three cars to look after. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. We had a van and a bus and a kind of a saloon car or something. Uh huh, uh huh. But yeah, keep it. Was that to do with the shop? Yes, it had to do with the shop. Oh, the shop. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And the, why, why was it was in the shop running it? And, and Jim, Jimmy Jimson. That was the same Jimmy that had started the shop in Wales. I see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And he took it on uh, about 1930, was it? You said that uh, Alder Robbie well, gave to take it to It seemed to me as if uh, Laurie, the brother, and Jimmy it was taken out of the shop before 1925. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. The post office salary was six pounds. <laughs> that would be for a month. That was the month's salary. And then hosiery. But I'm not even sure this is. Hosiery you would have been buying in. Or would you sell your loot? I, I don't see that, this is. Uh -huh. And then this is. And listen, that was the lead. He's paid a nine pound bill. Uh huh. So a, a month or so he said seventy three pounds for, for the week. Uh huh. Which wouldn't have been, no? Well, it would have been worth and then Sutler Booster, mm -hmm. thirteen pounds. Long Hill, one pound ten. Yes, should he include it in this disease? Uh huh. In a five and a five and a six and a thirteen and a fifteen. Which got on sixty. Uh-huh. And then Ellen Street School. Sixty four pounds, you see. Uh, I see. With fifty pounds really. He's been doing work with the school, you see. Uh-huh. Getting uh -huh. see, you see the shop with the supply they had it. But there is the days for doing anything for the school. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. You never we never, never get to No no, it was hard we are as well as the yes. mitten drink. But we go here. I did, I bet it here, so it's a dark eye of it. Thirteen and fourteen. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Closed. Yeah, three and days. When I saw that, I said, well, to close the shop for three days, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And, but I could no means of finding out what it was. Uh huh. It'd be on and on and on with me. And then this turned up. So that was, was it the, the third son, did you say, of, of, of uh, Aldrami? No, you sure. I'll just hand that up to the camera here, so yep. let's see it. There we are, look at that. And when you match them up with the takings for the book, or the book with the takings, yeah. it tells you why it was closed. That's it was, right. Uh, the brother, the brother of... Uh, it was a bit of a Jimmy. Jimmy that ran the shop at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. And what, what was the, the story of, of, uh, of his illness and that? Well, I said you can move this far away TV, but said it didn't move the far away TV. That would make him think he got the TV in, in the far away yeah. And you want the TB gone room. He might just have been diagnosed while he was in yes. the surgeon, yeah. Yep. And how did he uh, wind up in Cornwall then? What was the Well, that's something that's I've been answering that. Uh-huh. 
he had an uncle. Fraser Christie was his name. Ah, I see. Brother Fraser uh -huh. And he was a superintendent in the Mission to Deep Seas Fisherman. Ah, I see, yeah. Uh -huh. And he ran a hostel somewhere down in Cornwall, Mr. Uh -huh. And was married down there to a Cornish wife. Ah, I see, yeah. Uh -huh. And and uh, I should imagine that when he really lost his health, that they thought he might be better off in Cornwall than he would be in Shetland. I suppose, yeah, yeah. Well, yes. a healthier climate. Yes. Uh, and he was quite a good, but can't be honest with Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and did they have bairns? No, no, they don't have bairns. I mind, well, I mind in this way here, year after year, the, cal the calendar that came for Babs Christie. This oh, John, no, 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 he's John's son. Oh, it still comes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it still yes. comes, Babs Christie comes, she was in Shetland. So she's after that Fraser Christie, yeah? And Fraser Christie was her father. Her father, I see, I yeah. see. Yes. Yes, I mind her coming up for holidays and that. She would go down at the Sands. Yes, it? yes, well, she's yeah. out, Fraser, after his wife died. Then he was in the mission in Lerwick. Uh -huh. Now, when did he come to the mission in Lerwick and fell in with Nanya Sands? But did he find me Nanya Sands and come to the mission in Lerwick? I can't answer that. Ah, I see. Yeah. But whatever, he, he fell in with Nanya Sands, a sister to Jimmy and Betty. Ah, I see, yeah. yeah. And, and married her. And lo and behold, when he was somewhere for the seventies, that's it. Well, is I was thinking that there's a generation missing or something well, there for the wife that I mind. Well, you know. Babs is younger than me. What we were speaking about. Yeah. Babs is younger than me, but she's a first cousin to my father. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a new accent at the uh, that uh, where is she? Oh yes, this is Marilyn Jimison, was my aunt. Uh -huh. The first in the old Robbie and Katie's bed. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Marilyn Jimison, 1895. Well, she was the first cousin to Babs Christie. Uh -huh. This is, you're totally out of line, there should have been two generations in here. <laughs> So it can get confusing. Indeed, indeed. But you know what happened to them? Yeah. So that was Lawrence. Larry. Mm -hmm. And we've been working our way down through. Mm -hmm. Andrew. John was it? Lawrence. Oh, he died young. He was oh. 20. Was that the other one that died at home? Died at home with TV. That was the other one that came out in the yeah. yeah. Katie had a pretty, a pretty book that I bought. Oh? I bought them. I see. And I went to the house, I think like the issue of the house. I could not lay my hand upon it. Uh -huh. Something kind of in memoriam, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. It had ten, ten beds. Ten in total. And how far had we got when we came to your father and my grandfather? What, what was his number in the, in the ten? Eight. He was number eight, I see. So there's he was the youngest son. The youngest son, right. right, right. And then there were the two sisters. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. There were Lizzie and Aggie. Aggie, I mind. Aggie was the one that married and good to live in Cairo. That's right. Uh -huh. And what about Lizzie? Well, Lizzie married. She 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 she, she, she lost her mind the first one, or the second one. I see. And they were, they were three letters for them. Uh huh. And then she married an Englishman, Sir Lee Sullivan, wasn't it? Oh, 
Oh, ah, now you, I mind you, we were speaking about this the other night. Yeah. That was the Isle of Man. Did you go to the Isle of Man? Uh huh. So I couldn't get to Sydney, so I'd go to the Isle of Man and see. Couldn't get back to Sydney. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, that that family, that offspring, there, that's a, they're still, fuck, there's, that that line continues, so to speak. Yeah, well. Jackie, uh, I sh there were th the three letters for the first marriage, uh -huh. and I still I still go to Alice's name, and she died. Uh -huh. And Jackie was the second name, and she's alive and my but she bides in Eastbourne and she's a widow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, Carol was the third name, and she bides in the Isle of Man. But I couldn't tell you for sure whether there's men or men living in the name. I see. Uh, but he was an Indian. I see. He's an architect or something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, we didn't have a And was it Jackie you were saying still comes up to Sheffield? She was coming to Sheffield, yeah. And uh -huh. Carl comes sometimes too. Uh-huh, uh -huh. So were they kind of, did, did they grow up here then? Yes, just to grow up here. That was for the first marriage and then, mm -hmm. I see. Uh, but when, when she met, she remarried to Quentin. Eastwood, they are good together as a family. I see. When, when they left Shetland. Yes, yes. What time, time would that have been about? What, just after the war? Yeah, the death, just when the war finished. Uh, Tell me the truth, I can never look to know, I can't look when they listen to that. About the bag of daddies was about tight, you can't tell. That's what I was saying, the bag of daddies in the front. I see. And what about with, with Aggie? Her story is an exotic one, is it not? Well, she married this uh, Hammond, Hammond, the guy. Hammond? Oh, yeah. H A M I D. I think so. He was a, 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 a Egyptian student, doctor, uh -huh. and uh, was in this country, was in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, at the medical school. The medical school, yes. She fell in with him there. Uh, what was she doing in Edinburgh? I don't know. She might have been nursing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But she might just be there in sandwich or something. I, I don't know. Yeah. Just going to, to, to work. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have a lot of lashes, for shape and good sooth to domestic areas. There was a great Shetland community, especially around oh, Leith. Yes, 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 yes. I mind somebody saying that Prince Regent Street in Leith used to be called Shetlanders Avenue locally. <laughs> there was that many of them. And there still is a Shetland Egyptian student. Yeah, yeah. And married in good up there. Married in good up there. And that's what I like in it. But they had, was it three, three bairns? We were not quite sure, but they had three or four. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There were twelve boys in the last, and we, so many, so many talked to them, we were twelve lasses. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm not sure. And I mind one used to come a lot here. Freddy. Freddy, as, as he, well, he was, he was Freddy Jensen at times, as I mind, and he might have had him sell that, and then he yeah, was, he was a, Farid, Farid? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, he used to come up for holidays. Yes, yes, he used to come up. Yeah. Or regularly, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, would come. Uh -huh. He was all good. And did he not study in Edinburgh as well? Did he not come up? He did, he did. Too? He was in Edinburgh, that's what he was doing when he was coming up here. I seem to mind we used to get letters for Latin Place, <laughs> which I can very well know exactly where that street is. But, uh, yeah, he was a sort of a literary fellow, wasn't he? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know, was it literature that he studied? Or what he studied. But there's no connection with them, that, that family. No, we've tried back and forth. Uh huh. And uh, Jackie Clarence. Uh huh. Was was going to go to Egypt on Sunday. I see, uh -huh. And she was going to have seven days in Cairo. Uh -huh. And so she, Martin Jimison, for Scalwa, 
He was from the Lorries. Uh -huh. uh, he was the last thing to gain anything about John Fenley. Oh, I see. So she got Artie Kent, uh -huh. a dress and things. And she had Jean Nukant, and she had, had a guide with her. Uh -huh. But they had no foot on his thing. Oh, I see. And so she had to leave it. Mm -hmm. But the guide had promised that she would follow it up. Uh -huh. But the last time I spoke with her, she was having nothing back for her. So she got to be Well, it's a, it's a huge, huge city, as oh, kind of, so it would be hard to find. You never can just have. They might be like they might be like Smiths here. Oh yes, yes, yes. thousands, millions of them. Yeah. So she was the youngest down there, uh, uh, the Bairns. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Lizzie was the youngest. Oh, was Lizzie was the youngest? I thought so. Well, this tent was up what, to the, the end of the wire, I suppose, eh? Yeah. And, uh, and you were back in Sanus at that stage. Yep. Back in this house. Yes, yes, back here. Yeah. The house and the, the, the shop and all, so the cans at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And what happened to Jimmy that was here before, then? Well, <laughs> he's at Lemmy. Uh-huh. He bought a horse and good to them. Oh, I see. Where was he in the town? In St. Dollar Street. Uh huh. And, uh, what he did just immediately after he got to drink, that I'm not just sure about. I have a feeling he didn't do very much for a, for a year or two. Uh huh. He would have had a bit of capital, maybe. Well, he might have done, yes. But, I, I, I wouldn't have been, I, I, I don't know, a year, he would have been there. Uh, but he got involved with Shippy. Sheepy. John Smith with Betty. Uh huh. Scholar. Uh huh. And they stand by now. Uh huh. Together. Uh, Shetland Wood Brothers. So that's Jimison and Smith. Jimison right? and Smith. I see. Uh -huh. Yes, I see. Yeah. And they bought two and, 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 and the firm stuff. By them. Uh -huh. no, them knows. That's a bad for the firm. Uh huh. And. <laughs> and uh, they said, look, when, when the Smith said, she, he, when he could go to the wood rocker, which was when he died, uh -huh. then the Smith took them out. I see, uh -huh. They were not in that place in the the Smith. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we ain't got on with him, not too badly. Uh -huh. Yeah. But they, they were barely. Must I think when we started spinning the army? I see, yeah, yeah. They went up and down the town. Uh huh. And they did guys about the half of them. Because they were claiming that we were making the same colour as they were making. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Well, how the, how the but they were never spinning, were they? No, 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 no. They, they were buying them to the yard. mainland and to be spun, this is. Yeah. And they were claiming that we were, we were making the yard the same colour as that. Yeah, yeah. And how <coughs> but there's, oh, there's no back behind the sun no, You can't like, copyright a colour, anyway. Quite, 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 but in the back, quite. Exactly, exactly. And uh, this went on for a start. And, and I, and, and see, I was hunting the brothers, and they were with, with the spinners. That was the mill. That was the mill for, uh -huh. for the brokers. And boy, we got one right for there as long as we wanted them. Yeah, yeah. I mind was going to Broad yeah. and to the mill there when we were away. And, yeah. Yeah. and, uh, and we got them and got the hand for them to some. But uh, the, the, the Smiths, they were the business of three friends, Jim Smith. Uh huh. It's the strong Benny. Uh huh. And then slightly older than me, they're there. As far as I can, they're still better than others. Than me. But, uh, they would wind up the hunters, you see. And then hunters would write to us. Uh -huh. Saying we were making their colours. <laughs> and then they stopped us. Yeah. It had to be done for a moment and quite a bad thought. And I mind, I can mind Jim Smith telling me, and sort of nicely, that they were, that you, you need to try to get the better of hunters, for they knew that 
Yeah. Right to the multi and, and they knew how to make the yarn and all they were just like all tired. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you were kind of changing the, the rules of the game, I suppose, by beginning to spin um, pure shatter yarn. Yeah. Tell, tell me what, what the, the, the kind of, um, we've been speaking about the shop and, and that side of it, but, but what about the, the ooh and the, the, was that always part of the, I mean, going back to 1925, there was an entry there, wasn't there, knitwear, or hosiery or something. You were? Uh, I mind was going around when I was young and, and uh, with a van to various places, getting, buying in the ooh. Oh, yes. When, when did that start as an enterprise, that, that, that end of it? Well, they were I bought in whom? Uh-huh. No, no. But back in the young period, even. Well, I don't know how long it's buying home maybe for the first one. I see, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And shipping it south. Shipping it south. He used to sell it to a man in Scarborough. In Scarborough? And I thought they were so much of that in here. So that was to kind of one of the sidelines, one of the the businesses that, that he was involved in then, was it? Well, it was just a case of if they were anything to be bought for certain he wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do come in case the bank won't say I want to sell that he'd bought. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And and the 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 and the I'm sure it's in here, but here's first we mentioned again for two pound ten to hands. Uh-huh. And uh, so quit quit he was buying it in it that that's what I am not sure of or something. Or selling it on to to somebody yes, exactly. or something. Or maybe in to So when when did the shop in uh, in the two Norton then? When when did you first open the shop there? Well it's just we come back here in forty seven. Uh huh. And I don't know there's some kind of funny my father Nationally did he leave for everything, then he wanted to open a shop then. Uh -huh. And uh, he opened the shop. Well, I'll say 1953. I see. But yes. I'm not certain that this actually was it. But if it wasn't a 52 or 54, then it was 53. Uh -huh. I'm sure it was opened in 54. And that was done on the. It was just a pretty good room. Do the one there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He took it away when he put it right through. Yes, yes, I can. I seem to kind of have seen photos or something. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and that was the start of Jemison's knitwear. Yeah. Well, this began. Well, I can't tell you my story. Uh, after this, Curtis Brothers, I think the carriers. Fuck those the brokers knew. Uh -huh. Then we got a letter from him. It must have been last Christmas. Or, or near, near to the end of the year. Telling was that we didn't stop using the name of Jimison. <laughs> By the end of the year, that they were going to take us to Portugal. You see? And we, we just laughed at it. I mean, the name of the new three per hour a hundred years. Uh -huh. But uh, my argument with this is that my father got the pretty shop with the uh -huh. And his brother Jimmy, that was in the brokers, came in the AD, just about the time he had the augment. Uh -huh. And kind of had to look around and us. Well, there's not that in the bank. Pretty place to receive. Uh -huh. It would have been big brother speaking to pretty brother. Well, well maybe something like that, you yeah. And then he says, Cross again the cat. Uh -huh. says, well, he says, look at Ken Jimmy, it's not weird. <laughs> this is, and that was going to be my so answer. Give him the name. <laughs> that was the answer that I was going to give him. Uh, after it come because no, I, I maybe wasn't right, but nobody could prove no, me wrong. Sorry. Nobody could contradict you. So that, that was kind of running down in the tune while um, you were out here in, in the 50s. Oh, yes, all the time. And, uh, didn't, my father just going to take the grain. Uh -huh. But uh, I, Bertha Johnson, the nurse, yes, yes. she looked after it. 
Uh -huh. And I, well, it gives us no clean. Yes, yes. But I, I don't think I ever took any money or anything. I see. Yeah. As far as I can find, I don't mind him. But that, that was rather than they were eager, uh, money lying there if you were paying it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it wasn't some place else that I said that. Well, this man in Scarborough, he was a weaver. Uh huh. Scarborough, he used to buy you from my grandpa. I see, yeah. So that would have been what hand spun in, in Shetland and then used for, for weaving, would it? Or well, goodness knows. Uh, goodness knows what more that is next year than that. So when did you start to kind of go and run the crafts and, and buy in the, the, the collection back? I went to go into home and then he the ship. I see. Just as soon as you kind of started here. So he must have, your father, my grandfather, must have had a, a plan about to develop in the knitwear side of it. And that. Well, he must have done, but he should, this is, this is, Jimmy Jimson, when he was here, he had box though. Uh -huh. And that was handed over the whiskey we can. I see, I see. Uh -huh. We took the whole business. Uh -huh. Because we, we were, he couldn't stop us with my own. I see. Uh -huh. And uh, he and never tried to stop us by uh -huh. so we were, see, we were right by now, then. And there would likely have been enough rope for you to put it oh, yeah, around them. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. It would have any problems. But uh, that's what got very hit up about it. <laughs> and we had to write a very, we had to get a letter in the name, but it cost a couple of thousand quid, I think. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but then it didn't come back again. Never had any made again. And then you moved for the, the shop in the Esplanade up to one in, um, in the Bank of Scotland. Yeah, yeah. well, you see, that was. As I said, it was running and they, they, they were always recording money accumulating in it. Uh -huh. It was doing their fat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that just seemed to be a natural thing to try and look for a better place. Uh -huh. And see, we had no right to be there. We, we were just there on a year to year basis. I see, yeah. yeah. You paid a year's rent and you were in, and at the end of the year, if you didn't pay the rent, you were out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so we, I was looking for a place for a while. My father was looking for a place. Oh, uh, another premises. Yeah, better place again. Yeah. And then uh, the crunch cam, I mean, they were going to go through with that right and that was the end of it. Uh, when was that exactly then? No, I could never tell you now. 60s, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in the 60s. Uh -huh. That was after um, your father did. That was 62, wasn't it? Two, yeah, yeah. Two. So anyway, uh, young police come up for sale, parties to cameras, and you just had to buy it and lock the door, uh -huh. and then get the ready to start, uh -huh. and then move in, uh -huh. and that's what we did, basically what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a bit of a former chemist, wasn't it? Yeah, a chemist, yeah. Uh -huh. I seem to mind. Just going in there, maybe even about the time when, when you were tagging it out and the smell, the kind of the <laughs> pharmacy, the yeah, um, yeah. apothecaries as they used to call it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think the mind was a place where you have a lot of mirrors and um, brooms and that. Yeah, wind. yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't have any kind of place. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, no, that did that, right? No, we didn't have a lot more trade up on the stage we did them back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's this, uh, we were, we were one of that rang in and told my one went through. Oh, I see. was coming. Ah, I see. They needed more space to in the back. So that would have been what, early 70s, something like that? Yeah, first of the 70s. Uh -huh. I can make old Harry Dreaver, was it? He would be my bank manager in early for years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and, and then there was a new man come, and, uh, and he was one mutant, and he was a man, man on bonds with it. 
Uh-huh. When was that beauty? What is this? What's his name? George. George Murray. Errol Murray, you can. Uh-huh. And then Errol Murray. That's the bunny Errol Murray. That's him. Yeah. And yeah. he came Errol Murray. Uh-huh. And uh, I remember me getting appointed at Murray. I said, George, I said, I've got to get a place to go. I said, I can't just move it on the street. But was I making any progress? Well, I said, I'm not sure. I'm trying. And uh, <laughs> but he did later I met Harry. Harry Dre was old yeah, yeah. manager we had for. He says, Is money giving you a half time but getting over the shop? <laughs> and I said, Well, it's, it's, it's no man of easy. Can you cook me a bloody man of easy? Oh, he said, Work the way. <laughs> and then you got what used to be Gifford and Smith's. That's right. Right. Uh-huh. Across the Lisk's office, yeah, as was. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that indeed, that she was quite a, um, I mean, was it Rose? I Rose, was? Yeah. She was quite a character. Right, right. Yeah. An ability. Was she? Oh, yes, yes, she was uh-huh. way up in the pedestal. I see. It would be, I suppose, a kind of fancy shop in this Fancy video. shop, this is fancy. Fancy clientele, and that's it. The best of Erwick's customers. Yes, yes, yes. yes.
So tell me then about the, when, when the, the spinning started and how that came about. How did it come about? Yeah, what was the story you had? Well, this is, if you know the game, the spinning of the rear of its head. Uh huh. Dus, en, en we bespraken op het bedwaard, die vragen me wat in de dag werd te rekenen. Ah, ik zie. Ja, ja. En dat is het leer doen. En dat is goed hard, die deed we willen zeggen. Een boel in de stress is zoals je eens in midden of zo. En die doet de hebben ze eigenlijk. Ik weet niet doen aan iets, maar die wordt niet soms in de tweede regen. Ja, ja. En we willen heen dat midden. And just out of the blue, somebody said, what about the spinning man, Jack? <laughs> you see? And I was sitting there, and I said, well, there's a spinning man closing down in the sky. Uh -huh. And there's a spinning man closing down in the sky. And if somebody would go there and bring the plant up here to sit, I wouldn't mind having to go on. I see. Uh -huh. But I mean, I didn't say it for deep down. Okay. But I, I mean, I was been through Rennies and Hunters and that. Okay. You can't put. I, I had an idea what was going on. Yeah, yeah. And then says Peter, when he left the school, he was three months in Johnson's Elgin. That's oh, right. Working. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. just then for the match, yeah, basically. Uh, and was that. Yeah, for the idea come up. Yes, yes, know? yes, yes. Right. So there was kind of coincidence or coincidence, synchronicity, as yes, the these yes. days. Yeah. But the only way uh, I go home for this meeting for them, and maybe the following day or so after, then the phone rang. Uh huh. And was a, a man with the house development board. I see. Yeah. They were getting that raising their heads in that time. Uh huh. And did I mean when I said about the spinning man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he said, I don't know where I were. Uh, I, I don't know, I said. But, but yes, I am interested. Uh -huh. And they never let go and tear my jacket. Uh -huh. After that, I said. Uh -huh. And the first of it uh, was, well, we bought a little spinning frame. As we were going to put in the back of a truck. I see. Done in Scotland and take it around the shows and things. Eggs cost them the shows and only can get 50% to let Fox see who you are with me. And he, he says, it's never worked out. Uh -huh. He says, this spinning frame is standing there if you, if you take it, you'll want to get rid of it. I see, yeah. So I had to rise and shit. But that was nothing uh -huh. at all. Look at that with the bean. Nay bigger than. To the end of the but it must have been to the end of the builder. Ah, I see. And yeah. about that same height. No, no quite industrial. That was, that was a, a sample care there. I see, I they see. Would yeah. put in, they would put in oom and get a very good colour. Uh -huh. The colour that was going to come out that way. Uh -huh. But they couldn't make it out of it. They couldn't make it out of it, but that was impossible to do it. So, of course, but we got, we set it up and set it going, you see. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, the, 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 the Johnson man and Ranger was the agent for the HIDB. Uh -huh. He was there on the phone, what are you doing? And you're denying the weed, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's funny, we, well, yes, we tried it, but you can, we can't work yard on yard. And we'd only get maybe 10 pounds a day if we got that. And, uh, so that's good on and on. Then she will just bring the room shade up here. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So, well, they'll get more, we'll get more plant then. This is it. But then this is, we need three phase electricity supply. Uh huh. And you couldn't run the food. I see. And uh, I shall mind, we just then the cushion was involved. Because half the bus. He was involved in it, and he, I met him in there and he said, what about what? I said, I said, there's one 1,600 pounds, but in an electricity supply. 
He says, I'm not spending 16 hundred pounds to put that out. <laughs> oh, I see, wow. And uh, I think it was that same afternoon, I was up here in the shop and the phone rang. Well, there's Alvin speaking. He says, the money for that electricity supply is in your account. <laughs> it was in their account. They must have been very keen to get well, into the I suppose it's uh, it's their job. In a way. Yes, yes, that's what's exactly right up there. Yes, yes. So, of course, the electricity come in, and then the health department board had a kind of an engineer block. A pretty object, though, they were such a scanny body in their life. And how about people set off to Bradford? Ah. Uh. And, uh, they go to another the young places of one year, he'd spin plant, second hand spin plant. Yes, yes. Step to see hands. Uh-huh. And Uto and they got it up. The plant that we take up here in the shade of my sort of plant. Yes, yes, yes. And so that can be different places, bits for here and yeah, bits just for there. Bits for whatever we buy. Yeah, I see, yeah. And uh, and we just sat at work and we and sorting through it and alphabet it and doing this and that and the next thing until we could actually make the hand on it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Did that take a while then to get it kind of set up? Oh yeah, we uh, spent a lot of time. Tune properly. We spent a lot of time upon it. Uh-huh. And I seem to mind you kind of Heath Robinson fashion making bits for this and that together. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did, we did. So all that mechanical experience, Peter Garrick's tuition well, that's back in there. Yeah. The 30s would have come in handy. But, uh, and then I can mind hunters, you see, they used to come to set them once a year, very other customers. Uh -huh. So they were coming to see where and then we got thirsty minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I was a book there when they came back. Right? In comes Tom Thompson to this. <laughs> well, Betty, how are you, boy? You know? I said, what came of that spinning mallet you were working with? <laughs> and I said, well, I said, wait a minute. Mission of Wilkwood, uh -huh. and uh, I had two jumpers lying on the desk. <laughs> made of uh -huh. And I said, well, I said, we've been working with you. And I said, just, well, I said, this is what we've got. I was just in Farnyard, and I had to And I said, look up at his face. <laughs> he said, what are you doing? Uh -huh. And I said, well, I'm making this mess. And I said, well, I'm making this mess. And I said, well, I must come to San Jose. I've got to see that. <laughs> and he came out and he came in and he had a look around the place and he says, I wouldn't even dream of making a garden on that. <laughs> we're making garden, we're selling it. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we only sell jumpers. Uh -huh. We never sell the garden. I see. Yeah. Because they would make a jumper and they would head them up to the left and see if you're even. Uh -huh. Unevenness was the trouble. I see. They said, they would get thick pieces and thin pieces. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. And uh, an evening was the problem, and uh, and uh, so and if you got a garment that was all right, you could then, then we sell, sell it on. Uh -huh. So uh, because we we got a lot, we got a lot, and we were made stuff half of it in that thing. Uh huh. And uh, and maybe even made a bit of publicity, publicity, but but uh, the 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 repair group was going to. Not very sure. We were on the continent. I don't know if it was in Paris or was in Italy. I'm not sure where it was. Uh -huh. and, and Nancy Heidberg, she was the chief of Could she sell some of her stuff? I see, yeah. Could, could she not sell some of that stuff? Try to sell and see how it would go. Uh -huh. And we say, well, don't know about that, Nancy. That was the yarn instead of the jumpers? No, no. We wanted to sell jumpers. I see, uh -huh. And see, we didn't have that in the big old pack of jumpers at that time, either. But on your way, we said, well, all right, sell 5,000 pounds worth uh -huh. the jumpers. Yes. And was she then kind of marketing it as um, holy men? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. That was the attraction. And they good. And we were working at those shades in very. And we were going down for a while at 11 o'clock. And uh, phoned this number. Nancy Heidberg's on the phone, man. 
So be fond of She just took her sled on the young jumpers. <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh -huh. well, she said 18,000 pounds worth. Wow. And then we can start buying that yet. That was just out a couple of days. Uh, yeah. Amazing. I suppose in those, uh, I always thought back after we should probably have uh, held on for another sail line and had not be a bigger bind. I mean, you weren't into can, I suppose. No, you could not tell you this. Money is making better. Well, that's so, all. So, so young was it. We, uh, we, she, she sell 18,000 pounds worth of gear in that way. Uh huh. And, uh, and what about the kind of the, the, the branding, the branding of it? Um, did, did that then follow? Or what, how did that come about? Well, we never say much about. I mean, we, we, it's explicit on the things that this is, not, this is, but this manufactured purely in Shetland. Uh -huh. It's never over the islands. Because I can go down to me, Eddie, after we had put the pepper, put the pepper, put the pepper, put the pepper, in the one to see me one day, and uh, he keeps carrying a jumper. This is one of the Everest jumpers, because they supply jumpers to the how old are you when you go climb Everest? I see, yeah. Warm jumper. Uh-huh. And he said, no, he said, that is a pure Shetland wool jumper. And he says, it must be as good as the one that's in your bag. And I said, well, yes, it probably is. But I said, Mr. Eddie, there's one huge difference. My jumpers have been made right here in Shetland. Where's yours been made? Uh-huh. Well, there's been men in Bow, I says, yes, maybe. Where did you get your yarn from? Uh-huh. Oh, but they sent the wool away to be spun. How do you know what you got back? Uh-huh. Took a jump in good and then they were again. <laughs> so weren't they kind of mixing something other in with No, 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 I'm sure they weren't. Uh -huh. But that wasn't a shit and then jump No, no, no. Uh -huh. In in the I mean in the purest sense. They were no. splitting hairs. Uh -huh. But I mean that is what the thing was about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And goodness knows that he's been here a lot of years, and he's not going to play shop yonder. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm almost seven. Uh -huh. So when did the funding come in then to, to, to big the new premises up the road here? Because you know, we've got to the point where you have the operation running in the U shed mm -hmm. with the Heath Robinson fixings, and you, you, you've established a market for it. Well, that just, just can't be after that week. We sort of started to look at the at the pros and cons of it. Uh huh. Really, and uh, and uh, but I didn't mind much about that somehow. And it was, I suppose, just kind of rolling on to its own accord when it got started. Yeah. Yeah. And the others, the others, what was going on with? But there's, you wonder sometimes the line can keep going like this. Well, you have a product and uh, it's yes. a unique one, so. You do? You that is quite or you do? That is the selling point, really. Yeah. So, what, what, where did we get to in terms of years then? How, how far on? When Nancy uh, phoned? Oh, well, what, that would have been. Yeah. been? That would have been sometime in the late 70s. I see, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I haven't seen it. And we just got in the other plant up the other one. Got her last set up and running. Uh -huh. And it's now supplying yarn all over the world oh, yeah. in large quantities as well as jumpers may do today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, equipped with the, the high-tech computerized pattern makers and... Well, with the jumpers, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But the, the, some of the... Some of the... Some of the spinning plant, and look, that's pretty... That's pretty... Uh, pretty antiquated. I see. Uh -huh. 
I wonder if an Elder Abbey would have made out, eh? If he was <laughs> standing, looking up towards Sanus Hill, see where the, the venture he began back in 1893 has ended up at. A ruin, a ruin for the old man in Scotland, Mr. Rooney. Uh -huh. But it should not be in this room. Oh well, will they be filling again? We're nearly filled, young two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> we could do with a cup of tea and a, and a pause, maybe, eh? Dublin just. Uh, Maxwell, they wouldn't let me let go. I'll pause him for now, as they say.